In this episode, we're kicking off the Halloween season here at Days of Dorker Pass, so stick around. <laughs> And welcome to Days of Dorker Pass. My name is Rob, and to kick off the Halloween season, I thought what better way than to discuss my favorite movie monster of all time, the werewolf. Now, there's probably been a hundred years of history when it comes to the cinema and werewolves, but there's only been a few standouts that I think are some of the best. Now, the criteria for me personally, and I'm this way with my werewolf literature as well, is I like bipedal, wolf-like, more wolf features than man, but not the on four leg kind of werewolf either. Now, I do like when they can go through different phases, because there's been some books I've read where it's wolf man, bipedal wolf, wolf, and that's awesome when you can have that much control over your curse. And that's the one thing I do love about werewolves is it is a curse, but it's also a strength when you know how to harness it. And there's been a few instances where in some movies and in some books where the hero or the villain in some cases can harness that energy, that curse. But anyway, one of my first exposures to werewolves in the cinema was the classic Lon Chaney Wolfman. But not in his solo movie. No, in the Abbott and Costello Meet the Wolfman flick. Um, Growing up on Saturday afternoons on one of the local stations, I can't even remember nowadays, um, they would show Abbott and Costello movies. And every once in a while, when you were really lucky, you would catch the Abbott and Costello meet, insert universal monster here. The Mummy, Frankenstein, Dracula, the Wolfman. And what was great about these movies was that they were crossing over into the Abbott and Costello universe, but the monsters were crossing over into the monster universe as well. And they were doing this decades before the Dark Universe was ever concocted and has been put to rest already, it seems. And just remember, folks, Abbott and Costello did it better than Tom Cruise could ever do it. So, if you get a chance, check those movies out. I mean, I think the art of black and white films is lost nowadays, but I think people of our generation were lucky enough to still have those held over from the previous generation, and I think we're all better for it. Anyway, number one on my list, even though they're not in any particular order, is American Werewolf in London. Now, the reason I picked this for the first one was because Everybody talks about this movie. It is a great movie, and it's a great werewolf in it. But it's number one on everybody's list, so we'll talk about it first. Um, the werewolf in it he doesn't get that much screen time, unfortunately. But when he does, it's perfection. The stop motion of bounding down the street to the up-close animatronic features... And a dude in a costume, which always gets extra points. But the things this movie does well, on top of having a great werewolf, are the horrors of the curse itself. He's plagued by the hauntings of his dead best friend. His victims. Past victims of the curse. Um... I mean, that just shows you that he's in for a bumpy ride the rest of his life. His short life. Sorry. 
didn't mean to spoil anything. <clears throat> but the other thing that the movie does great is the horror of the physical transformation. His body contorts, it warps, it becomes elongated as he turns into a wolf creature. And the only other movie that I think I dig the transformation a little bit more in how physically of a toll it takes on the person with the curse is in the company of wolves. But that definitely loses points because over dramatic acting, uh, the silly tongue flapping around. But what's awesome is when the wolf snout shoots out of the guy's mouth and it sh he sheds his human skin to be a wolf. And that's awesome. And it looks like it hurts. Like it probably would. But like I said, American Werewolf in London, great looking werewolf, great transformation, great handling of the curse. It's just a great movie. And when I was younger, we went to the Maryland Science Center uh, for a school trip, I believe. And they were having a Magic of the Movies display. And they had werewolf there in a glass case and I remember staring at it for what seemed like forever and I'd already been exposed to the movie by then but just seeing it up close it, it's beautiful it's artwork I mean anybody that thinks the work that goes into a movie isn't art needs to see something like that up close and personal now, number two on my list of numbers don't really mean anything is Bad Moon. Now, this movie came out in 1996, and to be honest, I've only seen it maybe once or twice. But I was quickly taken in by the design of the werewolf in this film. He's big, he's bestial, he's a bipedal wolf, and vicious. Great design, great execution, some of the animatronics of on the howling parts didn't look the best, but it was still beautiful to behold. Now, from what I can remember, the movie, very intense leading up to the ending, and it has two of the things that make any horror movie stick to landing. Kids and pets. You never want to see a pet get hurt. You never want to see a kid get hurt. And this movie had both in peril. Um, because this movie shows you the loyalty and love that a family dog has for his family. And no spoilers, sorry, but he's the hero of the day. And great, great werewolf in this movie. Like I said, I've only seen it maybe twice in my lifetime and hopefully I'll track it down soon and give it another watch. Now number three on the list of numbers don't mean anything is kind of a mixed bag because it's a series where some of the worst werewolves I've ever seen in a movie and some of the best. Now the only thing that is a negative about the best part is, and the worst part, is CGI. Like I said, I'm a purist. I love just a person in a suit with animatronics or stop motion. So CGI kind of takes away some of that art, artistry and brilliance. And granted, CGI is an art within itself, but there's nothing like the old school way of doing things. But the movie is Underworld. Specifically, the best werewolf in it <clears throat> is in Underworld 3, Rise of the Lycans. Now, in the first two movies, with some exception, I think that the Lycans are ridiculous looking. I mean, they just look like hairless monsters. I mean, you would have to tell me, that's a werewolf for me to really buy that it's a werewolf but in the third movie set in a medieval time it's a prequel 
the werewolves are old school bipedal monsters and I love it um, and you see a bunch of them which is great because they're bounding across a battlefield fighting the vampires in it now <clears throat> underworld unfortunately it has a great well it has a great mythos it has great action it has Kate Beckinsale but the vampires and werewolves have always been kind of lacking to me but in Rise of the Lycans, I mean, they're top-notch. It's a good movie, too. It's a good story. Like I said, it's medieval, so it's a lot of vampires in armor with swords versus werewolves. And the werewolves are the hero in it, which is another awesome part about it. Number four is a movie that is one of my personal favorites of the 80s, and that's Silver Bullet. Now, I'm sure a lot of people would dispute that the werewolf looks kind of ridiculous, but given the backdrop of the story, its origin in the Stephen King novelette, Cycle of the Werewolf, which Bernie Wrightson paints some of the best werewolves ever. Check it out if you haven't seen it. I'll try to throw up a picture. But, I don't know if the movie is handling Reverend Lowe's transformation like in the book it talks about the phases of the moon add to more of a the monster taking over so I don't know if the movie has different versions of Reverend Lowe's werewolf because of that or budget issues or or whatever it may be um, I heard Dino De Laurentiis who is the producer on the movie hated the werewolf in it which is unfortunate because there are parts of it where it is a great humanoid wolf huge hawking beast that adds fear to the situation especially the end where the werewolf has his final assault on the house um, one of the things about that movie is the the whole 80s empowerment of kids fighting monsters I mean that's that's a great theme and it was a theme that was mirrored in it is mirrored in all of Stranger Things but the first season the finale reminded me so much of Silver Bullet so if you haven't seen Silver Bullet but you love the ending of Stranger, Stranger Things season one check it out now, number five on the list of top six werewolves in movies is Dog Soldiers. Now, Dog Soldiers is a beautiful movie. It is a military movie with werewolves thrown in as a small platoon of soldiers is trapped in an old cottage that's being sieged by... A werewolf family um, the werewolf designs are great they're tall they're they have the uh, reversed like haunched legs of an animal as the actors portraying the werewolves are up on like stilts they're very spindly with big fuzzy I guess you'd call it a mane maybe on a wolf I don't know big clawed hands and deadly and they're smart and like I said these are villains that have learned to harness that curse they know what they're doing they're not just some mindless beast they're smart and hunting humans is fun for them now when you're first when you get your first view of one <clears throat> it's in the headlights of a car as they're eating a person and what better way to introduce the monster than that and we see them a lot and we see how nasty they are and it's done effectively like I said it's just a beautiful movie throughout so check it out if you haven't seen it I recommend it it's one of my favorites of all time now before we get to number six on the list which remember they're not in any particular order 
But before we get to the last one, I'd like to throw in a couple honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is from the movie Van Helsink. Now, yeah, it's kind of a cheesy, in-the-time CGI slugfest. Um, stars Hugh Jackman, Kate Beckinsale again. And the werewolf in it is completely CGI, but <clears throat> has that bestial animal on two legs vibe to it. And I dig that. I thought that's awesome. Another honorable mention is Monster Squad. I love the werewolf in that. I love the buildup of it, of him in the police station and him getting shot and his body escaping from the ambulance. That's also awesome. And it's a great design of a wolf man. That's the only reason that it's not on this list is because he's more man than he is wolf. But awesome, great prosthetics on the chest and makes him look bulky. And his mask is great. Even though it kind of reminds me of that wolf-like uh, ghoulie from the ghoulies. Now number three honorable mention is The Werewolf in Cabin in the Woods. Great movie. Everyone needs to drop everything they're doing and watch it if you haven't seen it. It's a great telling of all the horror tropes with a great, great reason behind it. But the only reason that werewolf isn't on this list because he fits all the criteria is he's not in it that much, unfortunately. So if he was in it a lot more, he would be definitely on this list. Okay, now we're number six in no particular order. The Howling. I love how big, shaggy these werewolves are and their long, tufted ears. I mean, it, it cuts a very imposing form and it's great. The movie's great. It has a lot of, I don't want to say political satire, but it has a lot of more to the story than just a horror movie, which is great. Great classic, also from 1981, which must be a great year for werewolves because that's the same year American Werewolf in London came out. But an extra shout out goes to Howling 3 because we see a new type of werewolf that has never been on the screen before or since, and that is a Thysaline or a Tasmanian wolf werewolf. They did it so great. They had the stripes. They had the dislocating jaw of the Thysaline. And they actually even have a baby scene in it to show you that the Thysaline was a marsupial. So extra special points for that. Awesome. And like I said, haven't seen that since. And I think we need more of that. Anyway, that was just a quick six top werewolves and movies, personally, that I love. I'm sure I miss some great werewolves that have been in movies. I haven't seen all the movies, so that's fair. Let me know in the comments what I missed. Tell me what your favorites are. And like I said, we're in the Halloween season, so let the Halloween party commence. See you next week. Keep being rad. Stay dorky. Peace out. Thank you for watching this episode presented by My Side of the Laundry Room. Please check out some of these other recommended videos, and if you enjoyed what you've watched, please hit the subscribe button. You can also follow on Twitter, like on Facebook, and read up on My Side of the Laundry Room at our blog. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep being rad and stay dorky.